Last time on Let's Play Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. Report GMFC Task Force. While on patrol on the Dasher system, we engage an unknown space pirate for day. It was so simple, I'm surprised it took me for so long to realise. All you do is use a charge shot of this crate, and there we are, the first upgrade in the game. We have taken back the missile launcher. Hello everyone, and welcome back to Let's Play Metroid Prime 2 Echoes. We came across our abandoned Galactic Federation ship with all the men killed and our own ship was also damaged by a storm so we are trapped in this planet the only thing we can do is explore the planet so let's go ahead and do that you want to use the galactic federation ship to get up onto this cliff over here and progress through the chamber we scan this star side of the kinetic orb cannon this will fire you and you'll fire any round object through. So what we can do is we can scan this. And a round circular object hologram appears looking to aim towards a target. Round circular object. Yeah, that's what you do there. You enter the um, kinetic orb cannon as a morph ball in order to fire yourself across the other side of the room. But before you do that, there is another Galactic Federation log here. Galactic Federation Marine Corps, personal log entry, PFCI Craney. Data transferred to your logbook for further review. Last night at Chow. Angsef starts talking about some bounty hunter and actually blew up a planet full of space pirates. I told her I didn't believe in fairy tales like that and she took it personal. I just find it hard to believe that one person took out an entire space pirate base, that's all. But if she wants to believe in this Samus or Bigfoot or Santa Claus, she can. So, that was another Galactic Federation Trooper log. I believe we have many of them now. Let's have a look at our logbook. From Force 1, we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 1, 2, 3, 6, I mean. And Force 2, we have a good amount of the Force 2 logs here, and we have five of these. So, I think we probably have most of the logs now. According to our data network, we are missing just one trooper log somewhere. Right, I say we go up ahead and continue to explore this planet. There has to be something for us, right? I don't know what, because we came here to retrieve the Galactic Federation, and surely that's the mission complete. But there's something weird going on on this planet. What do we do next? This morph ball tunnel leads to a passage, but we can't actually progress any further than this because it's locked ahead by this door here. There's also a, a trooper there. So if we go back through this tunnel, the way forward is indeed this missile door. Now that we have missiles, we can blow open the blast shield and that will become a regular door so we never need to use missiles ever again. We can now find the access to this area. In the new area, this is the final Galactic Federation Trooper Log. I'm the only one left. I managed to get out of the hive. But when I got to the ship, 
Everyone was gone. Dez. I'm heading for that alien building we saw earlier. Maybe someone can help me with there. Wait, something's moving down there. Hello? And that is every Galactic Federation trooper log in the game. We're only on episode 3, yet we already have all of them. I guess the only thing we can do now is to follow the advice of the trooper and head for the alien building in the middle of, of the area. We saw that vast temple as we came into the temple grounds. I say maybe we ought to go to it. Try some to morph ball to come down here and we have a new enemy. These are a Metroid Prime staple, the War Wasp. Cunning aerial hunter, airborne insect equipped with a venomous stinger capable of shredding your seal. Target can fire a blast of energy at foes. The War Wasp rarely strays far from its hive unless it is pursuing an immediate threat. It attacks no regard for its own survival, dive bombing its enemy with stinging extended fast working toxins from the stinger can incapacitate most small organisms. If it battles foes at range, it will fire bursts of potent energy. These guys can be pretty dangerous, do not kill them immediately because they are spawning from a singular point, or at least they will be for a vast majority of the game. These ones you can kill right off the bat and they won't respawn. But there's a very good reason I mentioned about this. Most of the time you see a war wasp, you don't want to go after the wasps first. All will become clear in the future. For now though, we need to scan this part here. Power restored to kinetic orb cannon, unit locked in current firing position. So we have a kinetic orb cannon which will allow us to get up to this ledge here and allow us to progress through the temple grounds. Go to this area and this is why you should kill the war wasp immediately. This is the war wasp hive. An organ organic domicile of insect predators. Destroying this structure will eliminate war wasps inside. Explosive weapons can damage it. War wasps require considerable amounts of sleep after a long hunt. They weave a protective hive from organic fluids. They secrete themselves, then crawl inside to rest. Though safe from most predators, the hives can be damaged by explosive weapons. Don't kill the war wasps immediately whenever you see them. Go after the hive first, which can't be locked onto. Use a missile on the hive to destroy it and then that you can then take out the war wasps nearby. There are multiple hives around this area. This is significantly easier to do on the Wii version thanks to the free flowing pointer. In the original GameCube version you have to stand still, hold the R button and move your arm cannon around so that you can fire a missile directly at the um, hive. We have another inactive kinetic orb cannon here and we have a ledge that's too high to jump up. So we've got to find an alternate way up. Scan this here, you can see it's a bit of a damaged structure. Wall section is structurally unsound, but explosive damage may cause it to weaken. Explosive damage we know is the key word for missile. As you can see we've got more wall wasps to deal with, so let's get them out of the way for now, but I think there is another hive around here. There's a hive up here. Let's destroy that now before it gets any worse where we get crowded up by war wasps. So if we scan this part here, we try another missile on it, but combat damage to walls is heavy, structural integrity critical. It have heavy impacts may cause it to shatter. Well, we still have a kinetic orb cannon. And there are more war wasps. Seriously, have I not destroyed all the hives yet? So we need to find a way to get this back online. This can be quite hard to find because this is very cunningly hidden behind this cliff face. Scan this to activate the kinetic orb cannon. Then we can deal with you first because you are starting to get annoying. Seriously, where's the other hive? Don't tell me it's up there. Well. If we're going through the Kinetic Orb Cannon... There it is! Right. 
take out these pesky war wasps. They can swarm and be irritating. Go through here. I don't really have much to say about the current area. It's um, pretty standard, but you can see we're in a morphable mode to roll through this tunnel to get round to the other side. And here is the entrance to that building we saw from much earlier. Don't forget to try and destroy as much as possible because you will want to get your missiles and health back as much as you can. Now we're going to enter this door and we come across a lift. Where does this lift go? Well, we are inside that giant building. So what does the inside of this place look like? Welcome to the Great Temple. Target has been dead for 8.1 cycles. Despite the presence of local animals, target corpse has not been disturbed. Scans show the presence of a toxic biochemical within the targets. This may explain the lack of carrion feeding. I think that's what it says. Bio scan complete. Target has been dead for 8.1 cycles. Target's size and muscle mass suggest heavy combat training. It's likely it was a warrior of some kind. The lack of gear, armor, or weapons is curious. Perhaps they were taken by others of its kind. Something very weird is happening on this planet. Move into this corridor here. And we have a new scan. Oh. We missed it. That's a um, pretty amount of um, stuff there. I think we need to go back in. Oh. We may not should be able to get back up there. That scan there is pretty important. It's one for the logbook. If we go through here, we have a save point. Along with a point of interest for later. Taloric alloy in within section is fractured, leaving area unstable. So when we have something that can destroy Taloric alloy, we need to get back here. We have a save point. I'm not going to take it immediately because we have a scan to chase up. Okay, we have healed up at the save points and now it's time to go out here and onwards to our next challenge. We'll have to get to that scan another time. Right now, we did a fair amount. We climbed around the temple grounds and found the entrance to the Great Temple. Let's see what lies beyond us in the main Great Temple Chamber. Hmm. That doesn't look good. I say we're trying to go a bit further on here because something's... Ah, I'm going to cut scene. It looks like we have an arena of a bunch of splinters, but there's something bigger there. Oh no. Yeah, regular splinters do not cut it. It has to be Dark splinters. So we have a bunch of splinters to fight off here. They're just the dark splinters that we've already fought before. Charge shots will do a pretty good hefty amount of damage to them. Remember to strafe when locked on to dodge their shots. Dark Splinters will take a quite a bit of their beating as we know from last episode. Just keep shooting at them and they should go down. But try not to get hit too much. You'll see why in just a moment. And now, here it is. 
the first boss battle in the game. Before you do anything else, scan this thing. This is the only chance of the entire game you have. This is the Alpha Splinter, an alpha male of a war pack. Gigantic predator, very swift and strong. It uses rapid attacks to defeat its foes. Splinter war packs are dominated by the largest male. Alpha Splinters use their tremendous strength, size and speed to subdue and kill prey, paving the way for their smaller broodlings. You have to scan it in this battle, otherwise you will never finish your logbook. Very important. So, we want to try and stay hit on, use missiles if possible to try and hit it down a few pegs. I thought there was a health bar for this thing, but we haven't seen it just yet. Ah, that's why. Get your scanner ready again because after it gets possessed it will become, yes that's right, you guessed it, a dark alpha splinter. Alpha male of a darkling war pack, gigantic predator with symbiotes and heart strength, speed and armor. Splinter alpha males are the first to be targeted for darkling possession. Dark alpha splinters grow in strength and durability, making them an even greater combat threat than normal. This is the true boss and there is our health bar. You know you're facing a boss battle when it has a health bar. Use charge shots and missiles to try and defeat this thing as quickly as possible. Watch out for his lunging attacks. Remember to dodge side by side if it looks like it's going to fire at any of those energy shots. Keep loading on this thing. The more damage you can do, the better. Power beam shots are rapid fire but they do not do as much damage as a missile or a charge beam shot. You can get a good missile shot then that will do quite a bit of damage to it. It's not the hardest of bosses, they will be significantly harder later on to come in the game. I assure you of that, but for now, this is the first boss and it's a relatively straightforward one. Continuously unloading on this thing. I don't really have much more to say about this boss battle. You can see exactly the strategy involved and try to beat it. It's very, very nearly down. And that's it, the first boss has been defeated. And we have, if you're playing the Wii version, a token for use in the extras. What's this? Unknown technology. So our reward for defeating the Dark Alpha Splinter I'm not quite sure what it is, but I think we better grab it. System alert! Unknown item acquired! Alien technology has been bonded to armor systems. Threat scan complete. No negative impact on suit performance. So we use up all our missiles in that fight against the Dark Alpha Splinter, but it was a boss battle, so that's okay in my book. So without further ado, let's go on ahead. Power relays connected. Elevator unit online. Step into the hologram to activate the elevator. As we ride up this elevator, what could be waiting at the end of us? What is that unknown item? What have we just gotten ourselves into? It started as a simple recon mission, but maybe there's something bigger involved. We've been seeing a lot of possessed life forms. I guess it's time to finally find out what is going on on planet Ether. I am Umos, Sentinel of the Luminoff. Please listen and hear of our world's peril. Long ago, a cosmic object fell to our planet's ether. 
exploding with great force. A rift was torn in time and space, and strange power flowed over the world. Where once there was one ether, there were now two. One of light, and one of shadow, each existing in its own dimension. It was the end of peace on Ether, for a new race was born that day on the Dark World, one filled with hate and terrible power. They are the Ing. The Ing are creatures of shadow and darkness, knowing nothing of peace or mercy. For decades we stood against them, yet now we lie on the verge of defeat. When Dark Aether was born, our planetary energy was divided, half for our world and half for theirs. Should one world gain of control of this energy, the other will perish. Before you arrived, the Ing had stolen a device from us. One that collects planetary energy. With it, they have weakened our planet to the verge of collapse. But fortune smiled upon us this day, for the energy transfer module is now bonded to you. With it, you can help us. Help us restore our world. You're our only hope, Samus. Should we fail, the Ing will look to the stars for new planets to ravage and conquer. Your species could be their next victims. The Ing have taken our energy to three temples on Dark Aether. Find these temples and transfer the energy from them to our own. I have updated your map system with the location of another temple. There is knowledge there that can help you on your way. I have also updated your translator module. You can now access devices and doors coded with violet holograms. Many lands are now open to you. Prepare well for your journey. The Ing now know you possess the energy transfer module. They will try to recover it at all costs. Return to me once you restore the energy to a temple. I will aid you as I can. Hello. May the light of Ether shine upon you. Energy has been fully replenished. So, we have a new mission. Before I go any further, I do want to scan our friend here. Morphology, Luminoff, Umos. Now, you, you could say Umos, Umos. I prefer to call him Umos, even though Umos is probably the correct way to say his name. Indigenous spe sentient species of planet Aether. Subject is Umos, a sentinel of the Luminoff, guardian of his species and this sacred temple. Scans indicate numerous beneficial abilities, including heightened reflexes, durability, Psionics and Flight. Ability to generate and manipulate energy on par with that of the Chozo. Dating scans suggest an age of 2.15 center cycles. Only known active member of the species. Remaining Luminoff locked in protective stasis until crisis is resolved. So, we have a new mission upon us. Umos here has tasked us with saving the very existence of planet Aether. He wants us to use this energy controller here Energy controllers were built by the Luminoff to regulate Aether's planetary energy Several wonders are powered by the energy controllers including a weather control grid and a teleportation system When Dark Aether was born 
it too had energy controllers, all linked to that world's planetary energy. So we need to travel around planet Aoife and restoring the energy to the light world from the dark world. Our adventure now well truly begins. You can talk to Umos again if you want. The temple in Aegon's dark shadow holds what you seek. Return the missing energy before Aegon is lost forever to the Ing. We scan this now. We have Luminoth Law. Our translators can now read this. Lunoth Law Translated Origins. Data transferred to your logbook for further review. It is told that the Lumenoth were not born of ether, but of the stars. In the early days, we roamed the greatness of the void, bathing in the glorious light of a thousand stars. We met a vast number of enlightened minds, the Enkrin, the Yila, and the Chosa among them. Each of them, we found, had claimed a homeworld, and formed a deep bond with it. In time, we decided to do the same. So that is how the Luminoth came to live on planet Aoife. I guess we have to go ahead and start our mission. We are headed destination Aegon Wastes. That is the first place we are looking to start our new mission. We go back into the room here. We've got a lot of um, different things we can do. We cannot get back to the save point as it, as it stands by the looks of it. We need to be able to access the doors. And we cannot go through here yet either because we do not be able to translate the Luminoth text here. We can only get through the violet ones, like this one here. Pathway to Aegon. Beyond the pathway to Aegon sector lies. So we cannot actually get back to the Galactic Federation ship until we can get through that gate back there. For now I guess we have to go through here and see what's this way. We have a new enemy, the Light Flyer. Light generating flyer. Target mechanoid is quite durable. It can fire bursts of energy in combat. The light flyer is an aggressive flying drone. Once launched with the Luminoth, it will now fire a burst of energy at any living thing within range. It generates light at all times, making it somewhat easy to target. So yeah, this thing is quite easy to destroy. It can attack you from quite a bit of a range, but nothing beats you have you can really do much about in fact charge shots will destroy this thing in one shot now i'll just close, close your attention to here now as i was saying earlier about an upgrade that i thought you could get earlier in the wii version yeah i thought about the fact that you do not actually have the spring ball before you can get the bombs in this game so you can't actually get it but there is an upgrade in here which you need to remember for later it's going to be quite important. Take a good listen. Can you hear a whirring noise? If you could hear it, that means that there's an item nearby. The closer you get to it, the larger that noise is. This is going to be your main key for trying to scout out all the extra pickups in this game and going for 100%. Right. Now we know that, we'll have to come back for this later, but for now, I guess we'll be on our way. Now this power relay is connected, elevator unit online. So this will take us out of the Great Temple. Where will we end up? Let's find out. While Samus is sending this elevator, I just want to say one comment. Rocket powered elevators are so cool! I love how Retro has a very practicality design to all their games where nothing floats without reason. Everything has a purpose as to why it's there. 
Let's go through this door. We can now scan this and we can now open this gate. Let this gateway forever protect our sacred temple. May you find enlightenment and peace. Lo and behold, we are back here. You remember this place? Yeah, this is where we detached our... We detached this thing here to drop and progress through it. Now, if we try to go through this way, we get a ravaged amount of splinters come out. And as part of the course now, they're going to be possessed by... Well, we now know them to be the Ing, but... I believe they're probably them, but if you try and kill them as much as possible before they become dark splinters, it'll make your time a lot easier. I wanted to show, try and go back through this way. If we try and go through here, we cannot go through here anymore because this gate is now blocking away. We cannot get past the ship again, so we're in sort of an enclosed area, but the world has opened up a bit more to us. You can see how this world loops back on itself a bit more now, as opposed to the straight line that it appeared to be earlier. We still have that missile expansion, we cannot get to that thing yet, we lack what we need to retrieve that. Something we can do though, is you remember this here? We have missiles now, so we can blast open this, go through this door, and surprise surprise there is an item here to collect. This is an energy tank, it increases our life by 99 points. So we now have an extra energy to go around. So this is going to be very useful. You want to collect as many energy tanks as possible because things are just going to go get tougher. You want more and more health as the game progresses, especially when you get to a certain point in the game, which we will cover later. So let's check our map now. So we have come down from the temple from this section here. And we cannot go back through this way, so the only way we have is to go back towards here. Now if we look at the map very carefully, there's a, an extra passage here, which we probably want to look at, because if you remember back in this room here, the one where we first found the crane, there was a door with a translator we couldn't get past. I think that might have changed by now though. Something I did not touch on when we went through here is this. So we can't use the power beam to energize this and we need an alternate energy source so that's why we can't do anything about it but you probably imagine that it probably leads to that missile expansion up that way. With that retrieved let's go through this door and go back on our way. I feel sorry for the green cray there you know. They're kind of weak now, especially when you face dark splinters, you know, got a, you know, you're understanding that this planet is under a big massive threat of extinction from a dark, twisted counterpart of itself. Let's jump down here and progress a bit further. Are there any enemies around here? Just the usual stuff. Let's open this door here and progress beyond the door. Beyond this door, the path of Aegon Lace Waste lies. Once fertile plains, now sands scorched and ruined by war. Many life thrive there again one day. Oh, wow, that's a pleasant sight. A new law entry. JFME's Testament. Data transfer your logbook for further review. Final entry, Warrior JFME. The army swells. Beasts and rogue machines joined the ranks of the Horde, all eager to bring death to the Luminoth. The Ing sent these new additions to the industrial site to do battle with me, while they watched from safety. Cowardly mongrels. My only regret in death is that I did not live to see the day of their defeat. May it come soon. It may not seem like it. Remember this thing is here though, because this is going to be very important much, much later on in the game. 
I say with that we go on our way to Aegon Wastes. As we've progressed through to the elevator, before going down the elevator, I will take a good look around because I believe we have a power up to collect. Yep, we blow this web down and there is a missile expansion. So, with that done, let's scan this here and open up the way to Aegon Wastes. Step into the holograms, activate the elevator. So, that is going to be it for this episode. Good episode's worth of progress. We managed to defeat a major boss battle in the game, the first boss battle, the Dark Alpha Splinter, and we learned the true fate of Planet Aether and started our mission to save the world. In the next episode, we're going to Aegon Wastes. See you guys next time.